right heart has two important valves one which is the atrioventricular valve present between the right atrium and the right ventricle this valve is called as the tricuspid valve another valve is present at the region of the outflow tract of the right ventricle and this is called as the it is called as the pulmonary valve you can see over here that this is the pulmonary valve it is the outflow tract of the right ventricle and it is guarded by the pulmonary valve while the atrioventricular orifice or the opening present between the right atrium and the right ventricle is guarded by the tricuspid valve you can see in this image this is the tricuspid valve so first we are going to discuss the tricuspid valve the tricuspid valve guards the right atrioventricular orifice you can see in this figure it is present between the right atrium and the right ventricle so it is a gateway it makes a gateway through which the blood will pass the tricuspid valve as its name indicates tricusp it is composed of three cusps or you can say it is composed of three leaflets the bases of each cusp the bases of each cusp is secured or you can say is attached to the fibrous ring the fibrous skeleton of the heart the fibrous skeleton surrounds the atrioventricular orifice and it maintains the shape of the opening so you know that heart mainly consist of a fibrous skeleton which mainly anchors the valves the tricuspid valve the mitral valve aortic valve and the pulmonary valve so this fibrous skeleton is basically securing the maintaining the shape of the opening and the base of each cusp is attached to the fibrous ring now these three cusps are continuous at the commissures near their bases the word commissure means unison so these three leaflets or these three cusps are united at the region of the commissures okay now in this figure you can see the fibrous trigone you can see the fibrous skeleton so this blue colored is the fibrous skeleton you can see this fibrous ring is encircling the atrioventricular valves the right side as well as on the left side this fibrous ring is also encircling the aortic valve as well as the pulmonary valve so it is made up of thick fibrous connective tissue which holds these cusps of the valves tricuspid mitral pulmonary as well as the aortic valves the tricuspid valve as we said it is made up of three cusps the names of the cusps are anterior septal and the posterior cusp so we will look over here this is the septal cusp of the tricuspid valve this is the anterior cusp of the tricuspid valve and this is the posterior cusp of the tricuspid valve now you can see that these valves are united every each cusp is united in the region of commissures so clear carefully see to the figure that the cusps are united in the regions of commissures another thing which you can observe in this figure is that cusps are attached to the fibrous ring to the fibrous ring of the tricuspid valve okay now during filling of the right ventricle when there is filling of the right ventricle the tricuspid valve is open 
because the blood will enter into the right ventricle from the right atrium hence the gateway is open and now the three cusps project into the right ventricle so this is the figure in which you can observe that this is a period of ventricular relaxation or you can say this is the period during which the ventricle is filling you can see that valves are apart and the blood can flow through the orifice the orifice is guarded by the tricuspid valve and right now the valve is open so the valve cusp they project into the lumen of the ventricle the tricuspid valve they are the cusps are attached to the corda tendinae now you should remember what is corda tendinae corda tendinae are actually the fibrous tendinous cords which arise from the tip of the papillary muscles so you can see the papillary muscles over here anterior papillary muscle the posterior papillary muscle and the septal papillary muscle from these papillary muscles the corda tendinae arise and these corda tendinae are attached to the free margins of the cusp like the strings on the parachute okay the corda tendinae and the papillary muscles when these papillary muscles contract they keep the valves closed during the ventricular contraction now what happens to the blood flow during the ventricular contraction when the right ventricle contracts the atrioventricular valve the tricuspid valve closes and the blood is propelled into the pulmonary trunk this is the pulmonary trunk the blood is pushed into the pulmonary trunk and the tricuspid valve is closed so that the blood does not regurgitate or re-enter into the right atrium so what two structures are going to close the valves the corda tendinae and the papillary muscles keep the valves closed during the ventricular contraction every corda tendinae is attached to the adjacent sides of two cusps now you can see the corda tendinae arising from one papillary muscle is actually attached on the two cusps the anterior cusp as well as the posterior cusp similarly the septal papillary muscle or the septal corda tendinae is attached to the septal cusp as well as to the posterior cusp so they are actually attached to the adjacent sides of two cusp this prevents the separation of the cusp during the ventricular contraction kehne ka matlab ye hai ki ye jo cords hain ye do cusp pe attached hai ek cord do pe attached hai to jab ek cord contract hoti hai to ye do cusp ko niche khinchti hai so it prevents the separation of the cusp during the ventricular contraction well we said it is made up of it is at the guarding the right atrioventricular orifice it is made up of three cusp septal cusp anterior cusp and the posterior cusp these three cusps are attached to the fibrous ring or you can say the fibrous skeleton of the heart and these three cusps are united at the regions of the commissures every cusp is attached to the corda tendinae and the corda tendinae they arise from the papillary muscles during the ventricular relaxation during the filling phase the tricuspid valve is open and the blood enters into the right ventricle from the right atrium during the ventricular contraction the atrioventricular valve the tricuspid valve is closed and the blood enters into the pulmonary trunk by passing through the pulmonary valve 
So now we are going to discuss the outflow valve, which is the pulmonary valve. Okay, it guards the outflow tract of the right ventricle, the opening into the pulmonary trunk. Now you can see in this figure, this is the right ventricle and this is the outflow tract of the right ventricle entering into the pulmonary trunk. This is the pulmonary valve. So when the ventricle contracts, the pulmonary valve is opened and the blood is pushed into the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary valve is made up of three semilunar cusps. Now look into the figure. This is the pulmonary valve and you can see it is made up of one, two and three semilunar cusps. Cusp or you can say the leaflets. So the three semilunar cusps are the anterior, right and the left cusps. When you view these cusps from the superior leaf or when you view these cusps from the pulmonary trunk, they appear concave. While when you view them from the right ventricle, they appear convex. Okay. So this is the pulmonary trunk and you can see the semilunar valves of the pulmonary valve. Another thing you have to appreciate in this figure that the pulmonary semilunar cusp, they do not have tendinous cords to support them. You can see over here that in the figure, they do not have tendinous cords to support them. They are only attached to the fibrous rings. The pulmonary valves are smaller as compared to the atrioventricular valves and they bear less than half of the pressure as compared to the atrioventricular valves. When you look into the figure, this is the tricuspid or you can say the right AV valve. It is comparatively larger than the pulmonary valve. The pulmonary valve bear less than half of the pressure compared to the AV valves. This is an image in which you can see the superior view of the pulmonary valves. I said that when you're going to view the pulmonary valve from the pulmonary trunk, they appear concave. So these are the, there are the three cusps, the anterior semilunar cusp of the pulmonary valve. Then you have the left semilunar cusp of the pulmonary valve. And you have the right semilunar cusp of the pulmonary valve. They all are attached to the fibrous ring. This is the fibrous ring which is anchoring these valves. Okay, so when you view the pulmonary valve from the superiorly or from the pulmonary trunk, the cusp appear concave. Okay, the free edges of the valve cusp project upward into the lumen of the pulmonary trunk. So when the valves are open, the free edges of the valve cusp will project upward into the lumen of the pulmonary trunk and it will allow the blood to enter into the pulmonary trunk. The edges of each cusp is thickened in the region of contact to form the lunule. You can see in this figure that edges of these cusps Edges of these semilunar cusps, they are thickened to form the lunule. And the apex of the angulated free edge is thickened as the nodule. So this central thickening of the cusp is called as nodule. And the edges, the thickened edges of the cusp is called as the lunule. Now immediately in this view you can see the pulmonary valve is open 
and the cusp are projecting inside the wall of the pulmonary trunk okay immediately superior to each semilunar cusp the wall of the origin of pulmonary trunk are slightly dilated to form a sinus so slightly dilated part the beginning of the pulmonary trunk is dilated and it is called as pulmonary sinus during contraction of the ventricle what happens that the pulmonary valve gets open to allow the blood to enter into the pulmonary trunk so during contraction of the ventricle the cusps project into the artery as you can see in the figure the cusps project into the artery and are pressed towards its wall and the blood finally leaves the ventricle so this is an open region opened pulmonary valve you can clearly see over here the three cusps of the pulmonary valve anterior right and left cusp and you can see how the valve gets open the cusps are projected into the artery and they are pressed towards its wall opening the lumen of the pulmonary valve opening the orifice of the pulmonary valve so the blood passes into the pulmonary trunk during ventricular contraction again you can see in this figure as the ventricle contracts and the intraventricular pressure rises blood is pushed against the semilunar valves forcing them open so the semilunar valves they are pressed against the walls of the pulmonary trunk by this the valve becomes open and the blood rushes out of the ventricle now what happens during relaxation so after relaxation of the ventricle the elastic recoil of the wall of the pulmonary trunk forces the blood back towards the heart but at this time the pulmonary valve closes how the cusps open up like pockets as they catch the reversed blood flow as the blood returns back towards the heart what happens the semilunar cusp they open up and they become like pockets and they catch the reversed blood flow they come together to completely close the orifice supporting each other so they all are now accumulated with blood like pockets and they support each other and they come together to completely close the orifice and hence by this they prevent the blood from returning back to the right ventricle so this was all about pulmonary valve and the tricuspid valve to go through the book kl